tour. The Velvet Underground were the ultimate cult band of their day, influencing the likes of David Bowie and the punk movement. Now the four surviving members have reformed the band to play a month of dates across Europe. Nicholas Glass reports on the comeback of a rock legend. We're looking forward very much to playing for people who have always said, I wish I could have seen a Velvet Underground show. Well, now you can with the original four, four members in great shape, up and barking. I'm waiting for my man. The Velvet Underground only made four albums and nobody, relatively speaking, bought them. In my hand. But as the rock legend has it, those who did got their own bands together and over the years have kept put Acton, West London, and three weeks into rehearsal. This is a garage band that always had, by its own admission, a faintly amateurish sound. At the collective age of 200, this is their first ever European tour. And Lou Reed is playing alongside John Cale 25 years after he kicked him out of the band. We were all in attendance at a Warhol exhibition that uh, the Cartier Foundation had in Paris. And John and I were there doing a, uh, a little part of a piece called Songs for Drella. And Maureen and Sterling were there. And we all played together in impromptu. Mm -hmm. Very impromptu. And we had a lot of fun. And then we were all touring Europe together in various combinations. So we ended up all uh, playing together musically in various combinations and permutations. And we thought, this is such fun. Wouldn't it be great to just get together to play for fun? I mean, there was that sound that we have. Which, is, which has a number of elements that contribute to it. Uh, mainly technical things like intonation, changing the guitar intonation. And all of these things add up eventually. The way Maureen plays drums, the way Sterling plays guitar. All of these four different talents in the band contribute to what that sound is. And, it, and nobody else does it. The Velvet Underground were initially part of the Andy Warhol setup part of that fairly druggy New York milieu in the 1960s. This photo dates from 1966. Nico, one of the original singers of the band, died in 1988. Warhol himself in 1987. The band themselves had broken apart some years earlier in 1970 after just four years together. This time around, they're giving it tentatively just four weeks. The drummer, Mo Tucker, is now a mother of five and was working in computers. It's been a long time since you rehearsed together. Yeah, very. And had it changed? No. Exactly the same, you picked up your sticks where you left off? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Everybody uh, felt that way, it just happened right away. Sterling Morrison has been working as a tugboat pilot. Uh, what I wanted to do is you know, play these things live, and there's no way to do it unless uh, I could get the original people. And I think that's what uh, sort of amazed us uh, in Paris, you know, was how much we actually missed you know, hearing the stuff all around you. John Cale, classically trained, has continued to make a living out of music. You know, there's, there's a certain process that goes on when you take a band that hasn't played together for 25 years and put them back on the road. That is that you learn the material again, and you perform at least as well as you remember them if not better. And once you've done that and you've done basically what you enjoy doing most, then you turn to other matters and that's a later part of the process. So I think we've, we've, we're about where we, where we should be at the moment. There she goes again. Some things though never change. Lou Reed fronted the band then and he does so again. Reed gave the Velvet Underground attitude and he shows little signs of mellowing. There, there's a point to be proved here. There's no point to be proved. We're just having fun. 
But it's important that people show up. And if they want to. We'll be there. Yeah, I think it's more important we show up. Some people would, I mean, they're playing devil's advocate that this is to an extent an exercise in nostalgia. Well, then they shouldn't come. But do you think it's something new? Well, people who think along the lines you just said, like I said, they don't have to come. They wouldn't have liked it then. They won't like it now. He didn't have enough money to go to Wisconsin in the accepted fashion. True. The Velvet Underground are playing 17 gigs around Europe. The tour's a sellout. He would ship himself parcel post special delivery. The next day, Waldo went to the supermarket. If the Velvets are having fun, they should also be making a buck or two. There's talk of a live album. We, did, we set a, a time limit on how long our initial outing would be. It said, well, approximately a month. And, uh, and not a long grind, you know, of 31 nighters. You know, let's just go out and play a little bit. Uh, and then not play until we feel like doing it again. There's something about the four of us that, that, um, that gives us a long shelf life. But despite the fact in the old days, Lou and you eventually didn't get on that well. Well, I mean, that's, some of that friction is really what, what makes us unique, I think. How we solve it and how we make use of it. And that friction is still there? Creatively, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, being, it's being dealt with appropriately. Oh. We're having a good time. Lou Reed says it's a continuum, not a reunion. We shall see.